make sure you clean the piece. I mean, I've had pieces that have come to me with spider webs on them. Well, mm-hmm. if you're going to paint a spider web, then that paint's not really going to stick once that spider leaves. But yeah, I understand why people don't want to clean because it's the boring step. If yes. you're going to paint something, you're excited about the process of painting. You're excited about getting that bright green paint on it. You don't want to sand, but unfortunately you do have to if you want the paint to last. Yeah. Welcome to the Imperfectly Empowered Podcast with DIY healthy lifestyle blogger, Anna Fulmer. Empowering you to transform your life, one imperfect day at a time. Hello and welcome back to another episode of the Imperfectly Empowered Podcast. I am your host, Anna Fulmer. Do you have a piece of furniture sitting around your house that at least once a day you look at and think, man, I would love to redo that piece of furniture. Maybe it's an old stained beat up piece that you would love to paint and give it that like cute farmhouse, shabby chic look, whatever the case may be. Today's guest is an expert furniture refinisher. Rachel Boya is the author and owner of the popular website, Tea and Forget Me Nots, cutest website name. And she is here from across the pond. She is based in England, and she is going to share her easy tutorials for the furniture painter beginner to save money and learn how to refinish your old furniture, or maybe it's the piece you found alongside the road, have the confidence to start the project and refinish it like a pro. Welcome, Rachel. Hey. Hello. I literally was like, oh, I just need to make sure I'm on the right speaker. Oh, no, I've just muted myself. (laughs) Brilliant. (laughs) Oh, look at your cute little corner. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, we've got similar flowers. It's a theme. We do. I like, are yours real? No, no, absolutely Hmm. not. (laughs) I like yours. Oh, me neither. I can barely keep my children alive, let alone plants. That's basically how I feel. Yeah. I saw someone at um, a craft fair a while ago with dried flowers. She started the spiel about why I should like dried flowers. I was like, yeah. no, no, no. I'm I'm fully on board with the dried flowers. Like real <laughs> flowers. It's like, why would I have flowers for three days when I could have flowers for three years? <laughs> that is exactly right. They're definitely not made equal, I've learned. There's certain like dried flowers, or I should say dried are even different than fake. But yeah, the fake flowers are... <laughs> Yeah, I'm on so, board. you know, Poundland or a dollar store fake flowers, not so much. But if yes. you get the good ones, um, right. hopefully not like $50 ones. Um, yeah, game changer, definitely. 100%. Yep. <laughs> Rachel and I were on the same page. <laughs> Excellent. That's a good start. Yes, we are uh, moms hustling hard. We don't have time for real flowers. <laughs> Basically. Yes. Um, you, I, I love going through people's backstories and, um, your blog has so many fun, your website has so many fun projects and we're going to touch on some of those. And I'm excited. This is the first time we're really chatting about furniture painting on the blog. So I'm excited for women, especially to be able to get some of these beginner level tips, because I think so many of us have looked at that piece of furniture And we've had the thought, I would love to refinish this, but I don't even know where to start. And so then you don't because you're terrified you're going to mess up your piece. So I'm really excited. This is perfect. Um, And we'll talk about a couple of the other cool things that you have on your website as well. But let's press rewind a little bit. How did you even get into putting furniture painting tutorials onto a website? So it's funny when I... Think about things I do. So I paint furniture and I blog and I recently have a, a YouTube channel. And it seems a little bit random about you when you go back through like the golden thread of all the different various jobs that I've done. It's like, oh, that's the theme, that's the link. Mm. And obviously, this is only midway through, so who knows where it's going to end up. That's right. Um, but I so I did advertising at university. Um I liked the creative side of it and sort of English and copywriting, but quickly realized that actually um, advertising was a bit dog eat dog for me. Mm-hmm. I sort of like the more the more gentler, um, happier, more friendly uh, pace yeah. of life. So instead of going into advertising, I went and taught English in Hong Kong. Mm. Uh, oh my goodness! Started, yeah, it was yeah. So I did Hong Kong for a year and then Japan for three years. 
Um, And I wrote a blog while I was in both places and just just for family and friends, Um, almost like a diary, really. But that was 2008 when I went to Hong Kong. So it's, um, yeah, it feels like a lifetime ago or or is basically. Yeah. Um, And then I came home, you know, to get a, a real job and started working in internal communications, which is essentially Um, making videos, writing newsletters, running the internet uh, for employees so they could get information about what was going on in the business. So then several um, jobs in that later, I got my first home and then started painting furniture. The people I bought the home from kindly left some furniture for us. And I thought, Mm. "Hmm, well, that's a free piece of furniture that doesn't really have any sentimental value to me. So let's have a little play around and, and paint yeah. it. And then I, I fell into the world of things like free cycle. Um, so there were more free things available for me to play. Around I love on. that free cycle. That is the first time I've ever heard that term. No, free it's, it's cycle? a website. I love it. It's, it's a brilliant website. I have a blog post on how to find free furniture and free cycle. Mm-hmm. It's one of the top things that I recommend because it's people who say things like I'm taking this to the dump if, someone doesn't come and get it. Yeah. So again, yeah. it's it's low risk, which is probably yeah. one of my top suggestions for people who want to start furniture. Don't paint the family heirloom as your first piece. Yes. Um, <laughs> just do something that if it doesn't go well, firstly, you can just have another go. Yeah. But if it doesn't look right, don't be disheartened because there's no pressure. Now, where you're um, at in England, Hertfordshire, is that right? How do you say that? Yeah. Hertfordshire? So with yeah, you say it like an A, so Hertfordshire. Hertfordshire. Um, I'm not as familiar like with that area specifically. Here, I'm in Lancaster, Pennsylvania, and for us, it is very common. I didn't realize this wasn't normal. <laughs> you don't know what you don't know, but like people leave furniture on the side of the road all the time, so they just put it on the curb outside of their house with a a um, piece of printer paper that they wrote with a permanent marker free and just stick it on. So we kind of, we're in the middle of Amish country where homemade furniture and just like high quality wood furniture is it's here in abundance, put it that way. And so we have a lot of really nice pieces of furniture just sitting along the side of the road. Is that true of where you are or how do you tend to find I'm not sure what the landscape is like out there in Hertfordshire. Yeah, I wish it was like that. Um, Yeah, I hear about your, it's like, was it Big Trash Thursdays or something? That would be the Mm. dream if I lived there. No, we don't have that so much. We do have like the occasional, you know, free sign on a table next to the side of the road or something, Um, but not very often. And usually it will be, you know, an Ikea piece of furniture. So people tend to know when they've got something that's more valuable. Mm. Um, so the main places I get furniture from are charity shops. There are dedicated furniture charity shops. Um, like everything, the prices have gone up quite a lot recently as yeah. people are cottoning onto the fact that people are upcycling or just reselling as is, um, and they can get more money for it that way. Mm. So charity shops are the, probably the number one place that I go to. And then, yeah, free cycle, which is just getting rid of your old furniture. And of course, the classic Facebook same. Facebook Marketplace. I love me some Facebook Marketplace. My bank account doesn't <laughs> always. <laughs> yes. Yes. Well, in fact, so, so on this blog post, um, I actually talk about how to do your settings. So you only see free things or only see things that are like oh, that's brilliant. 10 pounds or under. Um, and get What's the name of that blog free. post? Because we'll make sure that gets included in the show notes. Do you remember? Um, it will be like if we like just searched ha- free cycle, it would come up on your it, yeah it would how website. to find free furniture yeah okay okay my editors are really good at finding that stuff so we'll make sure that that gets <laughs> that gets linked in the show notes um you so you were also commuting if i remember you had mentioned something about you were kind of doing this while also working full time and then you had yeah. a trial tell me how that whole transition happened yeah so I was doing just the occasional projects at home at the weekends um my my first project was 
putting apple crates into a bookshelf. So, you know, um, screwing four apple crates together and I've still got the bookshelf in my house. Um, so yeah, just sort of a fun little thing sort of that probably popped up on Pinterest and thought, ah, I can do that. Mm -hmm. Um, but you know, at the weekends I had time to do that before I had a child. Um, but yeah, I finished for maternity leave in March 2020. So obviously March 2020 was an interesting time for the majority of the world from a health yes. point of view. Oh, that's true. I'm like nodding here and not even putting the pieces together. So you finished maternity leave. Yeah. March so the month I, the month I finished, they actually was the month they sent everyone home and said, yeah. just don't come to the office work from home. So it all sort of tied on tied in for like me winding down for not being there. Um right. to everybody winding down for a year or two. Um, so then I had my son and then by the time I would have sort of naturally looked for a new job to go back, I was working in London. I just thought, I'm not going to do the hour commute both ways. I was going to say that's nursery. quite a commute. Yeah, I'm only a, an hour from London. It's not ridiculous, but I just wouldn't see my son. Um, yeah. So I thought, actually, let's try and stay home if possible, pick up the blog and turn it into a small business, which I've been very fortunate that it's been able to take off. Um, so I was painting more furniture, first selling it on things like Etsy and Facebook. Um, and then just by pure, you know, it's just everything is connected to each other. One of those random things. I saw this sign for a barn shop selling handmade and homemade pieces uh, at my dog's agility training. And so I took a photo of the sign saying, this looks like a shop that at least I want to visit. It sounds like it's my kind of place to go shopping. Um, and said, I sent them an email saying, would you be interested in selling some of the pieces I've made and sent some photos? And they said, yes, come and come and chat to us. And uh, for the story to make sense, my dog's name is Puzzle. And as I walked through the door and explained who I was, and she said, oh, you're Puzzle's mum. It's like, um, yes, that's not usually how I'm known, but... Yeah. <laughs> how do you know who I am based on my dog's name yeah um and of course you know just how all these things are connected together she also took her dog to agility training new puzzle the dog okay I have to um, ask what is dog agility training oh it's like an obstacle course so you get them going up like a frames and going through tunnels and weaving through poles. I wish my mom had taken me to agility training <laughs> yes it would be excellent for toddlers that as well fun. <laughs> Um, it's so I've got a cocker spaniel who has a lot of energy, so it's sort of a ball of fun. Um, and he needs sort of you know a bit of training and direction occasionally, <laughs> so it gets some of his energy out of I'm him. Like, I need that for my eight year old, that's so yes. cool. Anyways, sorry, I interrupted you. I know, so that's that's how I started selling pieces uh, at this barn shop. It's this sort of random chain of events that led to discovering it, even though I didn't know that the shop existed. Um, so yeah. It's funny how things So you out. now sell your pieces there. Is that what you're saying? Yes. Do you have a that's so cool. Okay. Yeah. So I've been I've been at the shop for two years. It's it's a great place. They've got mm. about a hundred different sellers in there, all painting furniture or vintage clothes, or it's it's really quirky, mm. sort of a unique little little gem. So it's it's great. And what is it called again? Homemade at the barn. So that's in, Homemade in Hertfordshire as well. At the barn in Hertfordshire, England. Next time you're in Harpature, swing yeah. into Homemade at the Barn. Yeah, say Rachel that sent you. So It'd be cool. great. <laughs> yes, say Rachel sent you. That's right. Um, I also wanted to point out, you mentioned that maternity leave. I, a lot of people don't know this. I did actually know this, but it's fascinating to me to highlight just different cultures. How long is a typical maternity leave? Share with us maternity leave in England. This is yes. true of Great Britain, I'm assuming, not just England. Yeah. 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 It is really good compared to the US. So we have typically six months to a year. Um, and the start of that is probably full pay and then maybe maybe sort of goes down to half pay. Um, and then there's sort of government issued pay, which is like the minimum amount, but it's still you're still getting paid to be off with mm -hmm. with your child. So yeah, we have it pretty good. I love that. I, I did actually know that, but I wanted to highlight that again because I just think that is, <laughs> it's so beautiful. It's such a shame that that is like so difficult for us to figure out over here. It's like as a woman, you are almost like forced back into work so quickly. 
Yeah, I mean, to be honest, to people, even here, people think that. Um, obviously, mm. you know, it, for us, it's just normal. Um, but even people with a one-year-old will say, oh, I had to go back to work because, you know, I had to be earning, et cetera. So, yeah, it, it, we're not even happy, so don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, isn't that true of humanity? We just struggle to be satisfied and grateful. Yeah, I'm grateful for the time I did get off, but it is so interesting to me, just the different cultures well, and... I, and- I have a friend who lives in Sweden with his wife and they get three years. So, wow. So yeah, you know, and like they have job security for that three years. Yeah. That's amazing. That's so fascinating to me. It's just part of the culture that there are so many more jobs covering maternity leave. So you just sign on for a a one year or a three year maternity contract. In fact, one of the jobs I did was as a maternity cover. Um, So you just know that you've got that job there for nine months and then you come back after having your baby your baby and it's you're comfortable so yeah Yeah, but even like a signed contract for one to three years I mean I would be interested to see the numbers but I think there's a lot of job positions here where people a non-maternity contract they don't stay employed for one to three years yeah so that's even a great gig even if you're just that's so fascinating Mm. I definitely remember some of the older people who, where I've worked in places and then they said, oh, you young people, you swap jobs every two years. I was like, well, yeah. you get such a good experience from doing so, though. So. And that's also true. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I love that. And do you have one? You have one little boy? I do. He's soon to be three. But um, yes, he's a uh, such a little chatterbox. In fact, we're we're going to Florida in a few weeks' time with him to Disney. So that yeah. is going to be an exciting adventure. <laughs> Have fun and God bless you. <laughs> <laughs> Disney is one of those people love it or hate it. It's hilarious when people when I hear couples are going to Disney. Sometimes the the one partner is thrilled and the other partner is like, uh. <laughs> just, just get just get through it. It's okay. Just get I through it. Yeah. How, how I look at it, I think okay, we've got low expectations on what we want to do. I think if you go and say, I'm going to do all the rides, I'm going to have all of the fun, you're going to be disappointed. So actually just say, (laughs) right, it's going to be a nice experience in general. Um, And then hopefully that's the case. Words of wisdom with Rachel people. That's right. (laughs) Low expectations. Just enjoy (laughs) enjoy it without. (laughs) Yes, less stress. Um. There was a couple couple posts on your blog that I wanted to mention for people uh, who might find any of these topics interesting. You shared some of your top blog posts from 2022. And I just picked out a couple to highlight that I went through because I think a lot of us women can benefit from these. You did one called How to Successfully Paint a Fridge to Match Your Kitchen Cabinets. Or in your case, I think you had cabinets from Ikea. So this is such a great idea because a lot of times you pay an arm and a leg for the the cabinet covered. For those of you that aren't sure what I'm talking about, you can get the front of your fridge taken off and you can get panels put on to match your kitchen cabinets. It's expensive. So you just painted your fridge to match your kitchen cabinets for that seamless look. Tell us your quick tips for painting a fridge? I mean, number one is to have a primer that applies to shiny surfaces. Uh, so, great tip. Um, I, uh, so I work with Dixie Bell. I believe you've done things yes. with Dixie Bell as well. Um, and they have a product called Slick Stick, which is essentially for shiny things like laminate. So lots, this works for Ikea furniture as well. Um, so paint two coats of that directly onto the fridge and then any normal paints like furniture paints, you can just apply on top of that and it will Did last. you scuff it at all first? Like, did you take sandpaper or anything? You just put it right on? Okay. No, because I thought scuffing a fridge would ruin the fridge because mm. if the paint didn't work or down the line, I wanted to take it off, I could take it off and I've not ruined that shiny see what surface. You're yeah. yeah. Um, so no, I, I didn't. I didn't scuff sand it. The slick stick is essentially the alternative to sanding. You should just Mm -hmm. be able to apply it to whatever surfaces it it can go on. Mm -hmm. Um, 
So that is essentially the most important thing if you want to apply it, because you could do it on something like a microwave and get everything to match. Because the problem with things like fridges is that they're all white or silver. Um, and my my kitchen is now dark blue. So I've been able to get a very similar dark blue of paint that I already had, and it now matches the cabinets. And it's just, it just makes the whole kitchen pull together a lot more nicely so yeah yeah, it's it's worked out really well I love that and I a lot of fridges too as a side tip for those of you interested will often offer other handle options have you ever done that like changed out the refrigerator handle my handle's built into the the door so it's it's not it's not like a something you specifically pull it's kind of like a, a hidden handle yeah and it might depend on the maker um I can't remember the one that we had, but it was actually like we could have changed out the handle if we wanted to. So, or you could just paint it. If you have gold knobs on your cabinets, you could do the finish the handle in gold. But I love that. I love that concept. So, Slick Stick is the product that she mentioned, Dixie Bell. Um, and then I love you had eight rules for upcycling for beginners. <laughs> Yes. This is a great one too. Um, also encourage people who are just getting into the wanting to redo things world. What what are some of these your top rules for upcycling? So it's essentially just the process or from start to finish. But an eight might sound like a lot, but actually it breaks down to really simple things like make sure you clean the piece. I mean, I've had pieces that have come to me with spider webs on them. Well, mm-hmm. if you're going to paint a spider web, then that paint's not really going to stick uh, once that spider leaves. <laughs> mm-hmm. So just make sure you clean the piece really well. Um, if Which I never want to do. I'm always like, oh, paint just is going to cover everything. And you're absolutely right. Or if there's like a fine layer of dust and dirt on it because it's been sitting. So make sure you clean your piece. It's so true. I have skipped that step before and it just does not. Does not work. What do you clean it with? What should people so clean I, their pieces with? I clean it with white lightning, which again is a Dixie Bell product, but it is a TSP cleaner. I think that's choice choice sodium phosphate. Um, I'm gonna nod. You, like, you, yep. <laughs> if, if you put if you Google TSP, uh, you'll get the right products. It's not specific to Dixie Bell. They just have one that they sell. Um, a lot of other people use. Um, dish soap uh because essentially it's getting rid of that layer of grease which is is exactly what dish soap does mm-hmm. it gets rid of the great grease from plates um so they're both good options um but yeah i understand why people don't want to clean because it's the boring step you know if you're yes. going to paint something you're excited about the process of painting you're excited about getting that bright green paint on it you don't want to paint, you don't want to sand, but unfortunately you do have to, if you want the paint to last. Yeah. yeah. That's a great tip. What would be one of your other top upcycling for beginners tips? Um, so sanding properly, um, because a lot of Cleaning people- Cleaning so and sanding. They are just the essential, but I, sanding is one of my least favorite steps and yet it makes all the difference. I don't like it either. I I have an electric sander and I don't like the noise. It's just, it's a lot. I mean, I have um, ear protection, but it's just, yeah. it takes so long. It's, mm-hmm. you just have to have a good podcast on or um, sometimes I just watch YouTube videos and just, so my brain's doing something else. Um, But I find whenever people talk about their paint didn't last and they talk about, oh, but I did a scuff sand. And if mm. you picture what a scuff sand looks like, you might think, oh, like scuffing your boots, scuffing your shoe, really like gentle. But actually you need to, what you're doing when you're scuff sanding with the sandpaper is you're getting rid of anything that's shiny um, off of that wood from the previous finish. So it's actually more intense than it sounds just by scuffing. So I think a lot of the time people just don't sand enough or or hard enough. So that is is an important one, however boring and time consuming it is. It's so true. And I can testify to this <laughs> <laughs> from personal experience. It really is true. Um, you did another one that I loved how to make MDF board look nice. So for yes. those of you that don't know what MDF board is, it, how would you describe MDF board? I'm trying to think of a clear example. Everybody, maybe most of you know what it is, but 
Um, so I did Google this at the time to see if MDF was a universal term, um, and it's not, but it's oh, essentially like chipboard. Um, it's when poor quality pieces of wood are just fused together. So it's what a lot of like the backs of pieces of furniture, like cheaper pieces of furniture, um, that's what's used on it, just um, like filler pieces that's not good quality. Um, and MDF is also really heavy. Um, and the most important thing about something like that is how to prime it so you don't want a water-based primer because it, all the water just seeps into all that glued together mm, pieces of wood. Interesting. Um, so, yeah, you need to make sure that it's primed properly and then you can paint it normally um, and it will look nice. But So you're saying an oil-based primer? Yeah. Basically. Yeah, so, okay. So I think probably bin shellac would work well for that you just create that barrier before you apply water you can use water-based paint on top of it but you just need that barrier to keep it sealed in but there's so much poorer quality furniture out there Mm -hmm. that instead of just throwing it all away as we all do so often um you can actually make that look nice as well you just need to know how to um prep it so it can succeed Mm -hmm. because there's so much time that goes into all of these things whether it's just doing one coat of paint on something um or the whole like sanding down to a Mm -hmm. raw wood and sealing it there's so much time and of course money as well in the resources so there's nothing more um dissatisfying than just seeing it chip away either the next day or six months (laughs) down the line (laughs) When you've already done a piece of furniture and then your child throws something at it the next day and takes off half the paint. I've been there too. <laughs> oh dear. So uh, actually one of my pieces um, for my son, here's a top tip for you. Um, don't necessarily put decoupaged wallpaper on a piece of furniture that's going in your child's room. <laughs> um, that How long seems did like an... that take till it got stripped off? <laughs> um, actually a long time, long enough for him to realize that it was paper. Um, but regardless, by the time he got to two, that was that was fair game for that paper coming off. Um, that sounds about right. is, it's fair enough you know as soon as it happened I thought well of course of course <laughs> but you know um it, it had that's to happen hilarious. for me to have that realization yeah that's so funny well and the one upside to MDF is there's no sanding involved <laughs> true <laughs> yes to prime prime really well I love that that makes so much sense so oil primer um for those of us here in the states minwax is kind of one of our go-to's um, but an oil based, it'll say on the front water based versus oil based. So that is a great tip. Make sure that you prime it first to make MDF look nice. Okay, the last the last hack before we get into your furniture painting tips. I loved the hack for hiding a garden hose. This was so cute. <laughs> I love what you did here. Tell us about the hack for hiding a garden hose. So essentially, my garden hose, if you imagine a hose just free rain in the garden. That is exactly what mine was. It was just a tripping hazard between my back door and the garage. Um, And I looked into garden hoses, but maybe it was like a pandemic pricing, but they were sort of a hundred, no, sorry, garden reels to store up a hose. I looked into those and at the time they were like 150 pounds. And I thought, Mm. That's ridiculous. Since I've seen them for like 60, but still it's a lot of money for something that's not particularly pretty. Um, and then I was I picked up one of my pieces of furniture that was was free on the side of the road, funnily enough. Mm-hmm. And it was in my shed for probably two years. And I was going to work on it anyway. And I discovered that it had old, like historic woodworm or some sort of like beetle holes in the bottom. So it couldn't have been restored without a lot of work. So I had this piece that was really only suitable for being outside. um, And I decided to hide the hose by cutting out the back of this cabinet, um, wrapping up the hose inside and then closing the doors. So instead of sort of a hose reel sticking on the side of my house, I've just got a little green cabinet that's got plant pots on the top. And when I want the hose, I just open the doors and turn the tap on behind it. And it's perfect. And actually it's been, well, yeah, one of my my top posts of last year, but also one of my top YouTube videos as well. Even though it's 
literally a minute long. Um, and it's funny because I've had a few comments from people saying, um, why didn't you just buy a hose reel? Like that is literally the point. The entire point yeah. is that you yeah. don't. <laughs> <laughs> you don't need a hose reel is the point of this video. Now, did you do anything to protect it from the elements? Like, did you cover it in an outdoor polyurethane or anything? Or what are your tips for that? Yeah. So after I did some like preventative um, things regarding like the the woodworm, just so that if there was any kind of leftover fat, then that should seal it in or protect it. And then the only other thing I did was use yacht varnish. Mm. That was supposed to be um, very strong for things that are outside. I mean, of course, it's for yachts. So yachts are outside the entire time and Hmm. Um, beaten down with weather so I just got one of those from Amazon I'm not familiar with yacht varnish I couldn't tell you if it was like a good brand or not but um yeah just sealed it with that and it seems to be holding up okay that's awesome yacht varnish so yacht as in the boat is that what's called on Amazon yacht varnish yeah so it's yeah because I I did some research to see what what I should be buying for sort of um Is it like an epoxy, maybe like a clear epoxy? Mm, I'm not sure. It was sort of thick, like a varnish. Yeah, that's so interesting. That's a great idea, though. It's a great idea. We're going to take a quick... Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Sorry. I was going to say, I found that when I was researching what I should use to to seal it outside, a lot of people were like, "Uh, it's like water resistant, but not repellent. and many things are sort of not recommended. Um, But this was something that came up quite a lot that was decent. So it makes sense. I mean, it's literally dropped in water. That's a great idea. (laughs) That's awesome. I'll have to look that up myself. Yacht varnish. Tip of the day. We are going to take a quick break, but when we come back, stay tuned for a speed round of this or that with Rachel. And we're going to hear more of her expert advice on painting used furniture like a pro so you can get that project started right when we come back you have tried it all worried you will never lose the extra weight or reclaim the energy you once enjoyed want to achieve fat loss without spending hours in a gym or eliminating entire food groups from your diet well now you can in the virtual faster way to fat loss with Anna, my six-week fitness and nutrition program you will learn how to pair effective 30-minute workouts with all-natural, evidence-based nutritional strategies to leverage what you eat and when you eat to reset your metabolism and burn fat fast, even that stubborn belly fat. I am a dual-certified nurse practitioner passionate about teaching sustainable strategies to promote fat loss and prevent disease. I have cheered on thousands of clients who have done just that with the Faster Way program. In my six-week program, the average client currently sheds seven inches of body fat, 93% report more energy, and 89% state that their mental health has improved. 100% of clients report they feel this program is sustainable. Curious to try the program but not sure if the strategies will work for you? Try the Faster Way strategies for free. Head to www.hammersandhugs.com and sign up for my free seven-day fat loss accelerator course today and start your own transformation story. All right, we are back here with Rachel. We are going to play a quick round of this or that. No stress, you'll get two options. You can tell me which comes to mind first. Would you rather candy or baked goods? Oh, tough one. Probably candy. Um, just because there's so many more options. That's and you don't have to make it. <laughs> That's true. Typically. That's true. What is your favorite <laughs> candy? Um, probably Haribo. So the wait, what is that? Oh, do you not have Haribo? Are we have are like the gummies. Yeah, it is gummies. Um, so yeah. there's like Hang fastics, kind of sugar coated, like uh, yeah, like like gummy bears, but with sugar on top as well. So terrible for you, but amazing. <laughs> I mean, that's okay. I asked actually. Haribo is my favorite um, company that makes gummy bears. We would just call them gummy bears, though. So I wasn't sure if like that was a specific. So Haribo gummies with lots of sugar on top. Yeah. <laughs> Um, would you rather visit France or Italy? 
Um, well, I've been to both. Um, both were amazing. Um, I'd probably say Italy. Um, it's got slightly more appealing food to me. I mean, you can't go wrong mm. with pizza and pasta. Um, mm. Although having said that, I, I drove through Milan when I did a trip there and that was one of the worst experiences of my life. Um, oh my gosh. So- <laughs> what happened in Milan? Because- nothing out of the ordinary if you're Italian however it was <laughs> it was busy um and lots of beeping and shouting and you know an experience so I would absolutely go back um however I would either have someone else driving or I would not drive <laughs> yes that's fair enough driving in other countries in general is very stressful <laughs> I have been there um so in France, where would you recommend going in those two places, Italy or France, from your experiences? Um, so Nice in the south of France is lovely. Mm. Um, it's near Cannes, sort of famous for the film festivals. So, you know, beaches and a little bit, a little bit fancy. Mm. Um, it's kind of got that nice um, extravagant lifestyle. Mm. Um, but equally the countryside where, you know, you will not get anyone speaking English at all. So you've got to know your words for, you know, baguettes and and beer and wine. Um, (laughs) But just, I I went house hunting with friends looking for essentially a sort of rundown chateau kind of thing in the French countryside. And that was- That sounds amazing. Yeah, it was was, Uh, was as magical as it sounds. French country is like my style. So I have, I'm literally looking at probably two dozen books on my shelf right now, all French country books. So that sounds- delightful. (laughs) Yeah. You can't go wrong. Yeah. I love that. Um, okay. Coffee or tea? Definitely coffee. Yes. Um, We have an English (laughs) woman who's choosing coffee. We'll make sure that Uh, this doesn't go public. And and literally my brand name (laughs) has the word tea in it. So yeah. That's true. That's true. (laughs) Wait, so I am really curious because this actually does not, I don't hear this a lot. What got you started with coffee? Did you grow up in like a tea home, a tea drinking yeah, home or no? Yeah, it is a tea drinking home. And also um, my mom's favorite flavor of things is coffee flavored cake, coffee flavored okay. biscuits, but doesn't drink coffee or didn't uh-huh. drink coffee. So I sort of grew up with this weird idea that coffee was really more for eating than drinking. That's so funny. <laughs> <laughs> it's that. it's pretty backward. I do accept that. Um, it's not one of those things that I think. <laughs> but it's interesting. Um, I was like, it, it's not that I think it's a normal thing that other people must do it. No, that is just weird <laughs> in my family. Um, and then I think I discovered the you know completely unhealthy coffee of Starbucks and yeah. the coffees of the world. And uh, yeah, give me um, a caramel latte any day. That's mm-hmm. that's the one. That's so funny. Well, here's yeah, an interesting concept too. So I actually grew up my first four years of life, grew up in Scotland and my parents became massive tea drinkers in those couple of years. And so growing up then back here in America, we grew up in a tea only home. Neither of my parents like coffee at all. And my siblings and I are all coffee obsessed. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, that's so funny. Do you drink tea at all? Or just primarily coffee? Yeah, occasionally, but more so because I'm just thirsty rather than, oh, I fancy right. a tea. But funnily, if my, my two-year-old has started asking for a cup of tea, if we have a oh. cup of tea. Um, <laughs> so, you know, he's he's very traditional. <laughs> That's so funny. Oh, your parents must be so proud. <laughs> um, so let's chat a little bit about furniture. So for those of you listening and watching, I want you to think about that one piece that you would love to redo. And this is the piece that you are going to apply these tips to because you can do it. I know I can speak for Rachel when we both say it would make us so happy to know that one person decided to actually embark on that furniture project for the first time because of her advice. So keep that piece of furniture in mind. We talked a little bit about how to find free furniture. I loved her tip. I would say the exact same thing. Get on Facebook Marketplace, find free furniture. And even if you don't want it, you would never use it. That's okay because you're just using it to practice right now. So whatever you want to do on that really nice piece, you're going to practice on this like cheapo piece that you don't care about. I would just say, make sure it's like material. If the piece that you really want to redo is MDF, then buy get a free MDF piece. If it's 
real wood, then find a cheap real wood piece. So just make sure it's like materials. But step number one, Rachel mentioned cleaning it. She gave you great tips on how to clean it. And we chatted a little bit about sanding, but share some of your other top tips for beginners in refinishing these pieces, whether it be products to use, tools, paints, so that there's there's a lower barrier. We want to empower you to refinish this piece. You can do it. Absolutely. And I think some of the best things that I've learned is making life easy for myself. Mm. Um, I'm going to say it's efficiency rather than laziness, but however you want to take it. But I take it as process, efficiency too. Yes. Yeah. Let's, let's go with that. Um, We're working but smarter, process, not harder. <laughs> absolutely. Um, but make the process just more enjoyable because you you want to spend as much time on the fun stuff. Um, so one of my things that I do, um, I put, so I, I use paint and mostly a paintbrush, but I have it in a roller tray and I line the roller tray with, um, cl- um, not cling film, with foil, with tin foil, like okay. baking foil. Um, yeah. And that just means that I don't have to wash the roller after I finish with the coat of paint. So essentially when you finish for the day, you can just ball up your foil and put it in the bin and then you're clean and you're good to go for the next day with a different coat of paint. And it's just so simple and so quick. And if you can save some cleaning, then that's a win. It's a great tip. Um, And on a a similar vein, I don't clean my paintbrushes every day. What, and you can actually save them for, I found several weeks by keeping them in the fridge wrapped up in cling Mm. film. Mm. So that stops the air getting to them. So the paint doesn't dry out. Um, Because often you're going to want to do more than one coat of paint. And you could wash the brushes between uses, but that is not very efficient with your time. Um, And often, you know, they're not fully dry either by the time you go back to them to get the second coat of paint on. So you can just store them in the fridge and then they're good to go as, as you left them, you know, the next day or literally a couple of weeks later, you can go back to them and the paintbrush is still good to go. That is brilliant. I did not know the fridge hack. So saran wrap is a, something that I've used a lot just for, which is what you're saying. Sorry, saran wrap cling film. Um, but I didn't know the fridge would make them last longer. That is so interesting. I've never done that. Yeah. I, I actually started Love using that. tin foil, but cling film or saran wrap works better because it just gets okay. a tighter seal. Mm-hmm. Okay. Love these. Uh, Time saving. <laughs> And then, I mean, I I don't know if you do much mixing of paint colors So say, you know, you've got your blue and you've got your reds because you want to make purple. For me, I can, I can't recreate the same color. I can't look at two colors that are similar and go, okay, I need to add a drop more to this to figure out how to match them. So what I do is I use an artist syringe, which is a syringe, like a medical syringe, but it's for artists. So it's much thicker and that holds Mm. paint but you still have the measurements of the syringe. So I use that to determine what my paint mixture will be so I can mm-hmm. perfectly recreate it for next time. So I've got, you know, one part red, one part blue. Um, and then if you tweak it, you can just measure that on your syringe as well. So you can recreate it again. I mean, maybe other people are better at eyeing colors of paint, but I am not not that person. I'm not. But to your point, though, very few people are going to be able to exactly duplicate by eye that color. So that is brilliant. That's a wonderful. And you guys, she has all of these on her website at T and forget me not. So if you're like, Oh my gosh, I love that. Where do I find that product? We will link all these things in the show notes so that you can visit her website and find all of these tips. And then do you have just a simple tutorial of if somebody wants to refinish that piece of furniture Do you have certain blog posts that you would or certain tutorials that you would send them to on your website that would be more descriptive? So I think the one you mentioned about um, the eight tips for beginners, that's essentially how I laid it out for the the eight steps. And if you do those, then you can't go wrong. So that is, I mean, these will all be, like I said, mentioned, but for all of this in one comprehensive spot, it's going to be 
um, the eight rules for upcycling for beginners, because you're going to upcycle that piece of furniture and you will do it. And let me also throw this out. If you redo a piece and you happen to have social media, I know it would mean the world to Rachel. I would love to see it, but to tag her on her social media, if you post it on Instagram or send it to her, I'm sure she would love to see it. Um, is Instagram the best place for them to do that for you? Yeah. Yeah. So that would be tea tea and forget me nots. Actually, one of my favorite things ever, I got um, tagged in a post from someone saying, I figured out how to do this because of tea and forget me nots. And I was like, I don't even know this person. This is amazing. Yes. Yes. That means the world to us when you go, when you actually are like, yeah, I, I did what you said and here's what we did. We love, love, love seeing those things. So please tag, look at her post and redo that piece of furniture in 2023. That's your goal. Little, um, little accomplishments build up to big reward. So don't under undervalue that furniture redo and then tag, tag Rachel, where else can people find you and follow you? You've got YouTube, Instagram, your website, share with us where we can find more of Rachel. So I am on TikTok as well. So it's all tea and forget me nots. Um, but primarily I am yeah on YouTube and Instagram. Tea and forget me nots with Rachel. Rachel, it's such an honor. I loved having you on here. Maybe one of these days we can paint a piece of, piece of furniture together. <laughs> You just have to come to Disney and then we'll meet there and do it. It's fine because it won't be it won't be too busy. So it'll be absolutely great. <laughs> I'm there because it's warm. I can do without Mickey Mouse, but I would love to be in the sunshine. Yeah. I would love yeah. that. I hope you guys have such an amazing time and I pray God's richest blessing over your home and your hearts and your sweet little, sweet little guy. I hope he has an amazing time in Disney. Thank you very much. Hey guys, Anna here. If you found this video helpful, then you do not want to miss this video right here beside me on the screen. Click on it. I know you're going to enjoy it. You guys remember, you cannot be redefined, only redeveloped one imperfect day at a time. Your story matters and you are loved.